Welcome to the Blender Goon and the start of my new Blender 4.0 for Second Life playlist. To install Blender, just go to blender.org and it'll bring you to this page here. Up at the top here, you can click download and we're gonna download the most current version for me right now, it is 4.0.2. So just go ahead and click that and it should download Blender and it puts it up top here when it's done. And if you would like to donate to uh, Blender Foundation, you can because it's completely free, but supporting them is not a bad idea. Once that's done downloading up here, you can go ahead and click this and uh, it'll start the installation. I'm not gonna install it because it's already installed, but go ahead and run through the installation. Once you have Blender installed and you open it up, don't touch nothing. <laughs> you have this splash screen here and you don't want to lose it. We have a couple options here. If you've used Blender before and you want to keep your previous settings, go ahead and click the load Blender 3.6 settings and that should keep everything more or less the same. There may be some broken add-ons that you might have to reinstall, but other than that, it's okay. Choose the language you'd like to use, the shortcuts. You can leave that at Blender. We're using the left, left button to uh, select with our mouse. Spacebar, I like to keep it at search and you can choose the theme. I prefer Blender Dark, but you can choose any of these themes you want. And then go ahead and save new settings. That's going to change your splash screen to the normal splash screen you get. And we'll show this in other videos. So on our splash screen, we have a few options. We have general and 2D animation, sculpting, VFX, video editing. Um, right now, we're just going to use general. If you're going to use general, you can just click off of here. And this is general. Um, the scene starts out with the camera and light and a cube. We're not going to bother with that right this second. We are going to jump right into preferences so that we can change some stuff to make this uh, a little more nicer to model in. So go up to edit and drop down to preferences and you'll get this pop up. So our first tab here is interface and uh, I'm going to change the resolution scale mainly because I'm recording and I want you guys to be able to see and you can you guys can change this to whatever you want to. I'm going to put it at 1.3 so y'all can see better. So the next uh, tab is themes. So we're going to click themes and we are going to mess with the 3D viewport. So if you hit the drop down for the 3D viewport, you get a bunch of colors here and you can scroll all the way to the bottom of the colors. And we have edge width and vertex size and things. But in order to be able to see what we're doing with that, if you mouse off of this window into the main window and you hit tab, um, you'll see the cube go into edit mode. And if you can't see the cube, you can move move this around to be able to see the cube. And I'm going to change the vertex size to like uh, six. That way they get bigger. And I'm going to change my edge width to two. And there's a whole video uh, that I'm going to put in the description by Artsons of Vol. And uh, he goes over a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, the other thing we're going to change is Base orientation front, we're going to click that and turn the alpha all the way down. That's all I'm going to mess with here, but I'll leave a link in the description for the Art Sons of All videos. So you guys can uh, go through it and see what you guys want to change. You can customize everything in Blender just about. Uh, the next uh, tab we're going to go to is navigation. Uh, there's a zoom to mouse position. I don't like it, <laughs> but a lot of people do. And what it does is wherever your mouse is, if you scroll in and out, it zooms your mouse or zooms your view to that position. So it is nice. Uh, maybe I'll leave it on. Uh, next is key mapping. This is a lot of the stuff on the initial splash screen. So if you missed it, you can change your spacebar action to search here and go through these options. But we don't need anything there. For system, you can change your undo steps. I'm going to change that to 100. Uh, you can change it to more if you want to. And then you want to check up here and look and see which video cards you have. Um, so you can go through these top tabs and choose the one that you have the highest. Mine's optics and I'm going to leave NVIDIA on and I'm going to leave my processor off. Uh, the next tab we're going to is save and load. So. The save versions, whenever you save a Blender file, it saves you another Blender file that's that's um, uh, .blend1. 
and you can up this or lower it. I don't like having extra save versions, so I, I leave mine at zero, but this is this is up to you. You should probably leave it at one until you figure out what's going on with Blender. Um, the load UI, uh, this thing comes into play later on. If you share files with somebody, it lo automatically loads their UI, which can be an absolute mess if you're used to having your own Blender. Uh, but usually I just um, load the file from, from file up here. And when you're in the screen to load, you can turn it off with the cogwheel. Uh, the next one is file paths. We don't have to worry about that right now. And then down here, we want to make sure auto save preferences is turned on. So uh, just make sure that's turned on. So that's all we're doing in, in the uh, preference panel. And I'm going to end this video here. Join me in the next one and we'll set up the viewport and install some add-ons and get Blender a little more ready to start modeling in.